Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mount Academy. I'm Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video describes how to conduct hypothesis testing on a mean value when you don't know the population standard deviation. Let's get started. So, as we saw earlier with confidence levels on mean values, we have to ask ourselves a key question. Do you know what the population standard deviation is? That same key question is going to be a key question for hypothesis testing. And the answer to that question is going to be pretty much the same. Most of the time, we're not going to know what the population standard deviation is. So then, we're going to have to proceed with hypothesis testing using a t-score. Now, this procedure that we have, uh, is there's two requirements that need to be met. Uh, because our procedure is based on a couple of assumptions. First, the typical assumption we make is that the sample is a simple random sample. And second, we're going to say the population is either normally distributed or its sample size is greater than 30 so that we can use the central limit theorem to use the normal distribution as an approximation. As I just mentioned a moment ago, our test statistic is a t-score because we don't know what the population standard deviation is. Here's the formula for calculating it. So if you want to go old school, this is what you would use to calculate the t-score. Personally, I, I just look at this and just like, wow, if this isn't an inducement to join the 21st century, gee, I don't know what is, you know, because I mean, <laughs> this looks pretty, pretty complicated as it is. As before with the proportion hypothesis testing, we're going to use p-values or critical values uh, with a test statistic to decide the test. And so let's look at an example to illustrate this. So here we have a table that lists uh, measurements of radiation emissions in watts per kilogram from a sample of 11 different cell phones. You kind of wonder if that uh, cell phone there by that driver Gee, I hope it's the radiation is not going to be like, well, I don't know. You can look at the values there in the table. You can see the levels are pretty low. But, uh, you know, if you don't have any standard by which to judge, it's like you don't know. I mean, it says, yeah, it's low, but is that going to do any damage? And, and, and the answer is no, it's not going to do. Well, it shouldn't do any damage. Let's put it that way. There's a number of different studies that have been done about this. And they have some conflicting results. So... Take someone to understand statistics to ferret out the fact from the fiction. Anywho, in this particular example, we're looking at 5% significance levels, or alpha is 5%, and we're testing the claim that the cell phones have a mean radiation level that is less than 1 watt per kilogram. So we have actual data here, so we can actually put that into StatCrunch if we wanted to, or we could just use the summary stats that are listed there. But either way, we got to check our requirements first to make sure that they've been met. So first, we're assuming we have a simple random sample. We don't have any evidence that it's not a simple random sample. So in that case, we just simply assume that, yeah, we have a simple random sample. And most of the time, that's actually going to be a fair assumption. Our sample size is 11. This is less than 30. So we can't use the central limit theorem to assume that we have a normal distribution, which means we have to have a normal distribution. And the way we check that, we check normality with the QQ plot. So here's our QQ plot. Looks like that data is, you know, more or less around that line, but, you know, it's, it's kind of a subjective thing. But, yeah, it doesn't look like it's deviating too far away. And there's no, well, it's kind of a distinct pattern, but, not the S pattern that we're normally looking for. So, yeah, we're going to say this data is normally distributed. So it looks like we've required, we've met our requirements. So let's go ahead and proceed with our hypothesis test. We have the claim that the cell phones have a mean radiation level less than one watt per kilogram. So we're going to express that claim as mu is less than one. Now we're ready to write our hypotheses. So the null hypothesis, always a statement of equality. The alternative hypothesis, there's no semblance of equality in our claim. Therefore, we can adopt it as the alternative hypothesis. As was declared in the problem statement, we have an alpha level of 
So the claim is about a population mean. The most relevant statistic is the sample mean. Remember, the mean is an unbiased estimator. So that means the sample mean is going to target the population mean, and that makes it the most relevant statistic for our test. Next, we can calculate the test statistic. You want to do this old school, here's how you do it. Put your formula out, and then, you know, list your values in. So X bar is your mean value. That was given there. We can actually get that from, you know, the sample data, or we can just take the summary stats that were listed. Either way, we're going to get the 0.938 for our mean value for the sample. This is the mean value that's claimed, which is 1. And we get that just from the claimed value that we used to form our null and alternative hypotheses. The sample standard deviation, you can calculate that from the sample data or just take the summary stat that was listed. Either way, it's 0.423. And then 11 is our sample size. So now that we've substituted our values in, we punch that out on the calculator and we get negative 0.486. Personally, I just use stack crunch to get the same number and it's a lot less hassle, a lot less work, and uh, a lot less stress. But hey, you know, what do I know? I'm just the instructor. Now we're ready to decide our test results. So we can compare the p-value with the significance level of alpha. We don't really have the p-value, though. We have is a test statistic, but we can get the p-value if we wanted it to. Okay, so here we've got our test statistic of negative 0.86. So in the t-calculator, in stack crunch, because remember, we don't know what the population standard deviation is, therefore we're using the student t-distribution. So in the t-calculator, notice how we have 10 degrees of freedom. That's one less than the sample size of 11. I put my test statistic in here, and I have a left-tailed test. So it's the left tail of my distribution is going to be the region I'm looking for. And that's going to be the area it's going to be that p-value that I'm looking for. So I have a p-value of 0.3187. And now that I have a p-value, I can actually compare that with the significance level alpha. We're well, you know, we're well outside that reason of rejection, so therefore we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Alternatively, I can just use the test statistic without getting the p-value, just compare the test statistic with a critical value. So in that case, I'm going to put into my calculator, here's the 5% significance level. That's the area in the tail that's on the left. So I want less than or equal to here. And then hit compute and out comes. This is the boundary for that region, which is the critical value, negative 1.81. If I compare that with the test statistic, I'm going to see that negative 0.486 is going to be somewhere over here. So I'm outside the region of rejection. Therefore, I fail to reject the null hypothesis. Because we fail to reject the null hypothesis, we conclude there is not sufficient evidence. It's a one-tailed test, so we're going to say support the claim. And then the rest of the statement is just a restatement of the claim itself. And that brings us to the end of this mini-lecture. I hope you found it helpful. You can find more mini-lectures for this and other courses at AspireMountainAcademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.